Hello, and welcome to the Comic Conspiracy episode 162. At least I believe that's the right episode number. Uh, for the week of June 9th, 2014, I'm Ryan Higgins, who is here with me this week. Brock Singer. Charlie Omar, Bryce Toby. Oh, and Toby's here. Another small cast this week. That's fine. Uh, yeah, we were off last week, although there was an episode we actually didn't record last week because we had that super mega double sized episode the week prior, uh, which we split in two. So. Which actually was a good thing because I was sick as hell last Monday and I would have sounded <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. I uh, was a whiny, nasally sick person? More, wise, more <clears throat> whiny, nasally, and sick than I normally am. This yes, is true. yes, yes. I was particularly sick last week. Uh, and there was like very little comic news last week. So mm, I guess not, it's actually not, okay because not, not much this week either. But yeah, you know, we got a few things to talk about. We always got a bunch of questions. So let's, uh, let's talk about a few of these things here. Uh, let's start, let's start with Toby's favorite subject. Linkin Park has a new album coming out. Let's start with Toby's actual favorite subject. Basketball. The Spurs are in the finals. Uh, I'm very annoyed that, uh, LeBron, you know, took that second game, but I mean, that's what he does, I guess. You know, that's what happens, right? Yeah. Uh, Let's talk about your other favorite, favorite subject. And that is superheroes with really big boners. Oh. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Natwing? There was a very funny article that I'm sure a lot of you guys saw, but it was passed around uh, all, all week. Uh, in Korea, there was a sculpt, uh, sculpt of Spider-Man that someone made above like some children's uh, playground area. And for some reason, it gave him a giant boner. Like, to- like this is the strangest thing I've ever seen. This- well, well, you know, the, the, the birds need to, you know, hang out somewhere. I guess. I guess. So... Uh, I saw this. I saw this picture being passed around and shown everywhere. So super, super funny. Well, maybe. Are you like really going to make it the, sp- <clears throat> the spider <throat> penis the picture? Maybe that will be the picture. Maybe that'll be the picture. This Zoom week, in so. on just that part. Guess do what do we is. know any more about this? Like, no, I did it. It's I, just like some dude decided to put a Spider Man statue up with a giant boner on it. Uh, yeah, it's um <laughs> um um. Let's see. Uh, sculptor was an artist named um un un uh Yun Suk. Uh, in suck you for over it's been up there for apparently for over a year what uh, with yeah. the boner yeah but people just we, we just it, find out about it now yeah but people just took it down so oh that's that's why i wonder if I kids guess, are walking around and go look mommy it's spider-man and she looks like oh jesus christ probably probably they said that um they received many complaints do you think uh, they just didn't notice the boner for all these years until now I don't know. Maybe the boner got added to the statue <laughs> as like an extra piece. No, I don't think so. I don't did, think so. It's, it's did the, the boner uh, shoot show well limited edition. Like the regular one comes with no boner, and <laughs> limited edition comes with the boner piece. <laughs> Maybe. So. Maybe it was a drainage thing, so it appeared like he was shooting web fluid. Ah, jeez. When it rained, like those, like those little baby, uh, yeah, those, those little, little angels, cherub, like, yeah. like fountain things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what a weird story that is. That's super funny. But uh, yeah, let's, let, let's move on to some Twitter questions. Disturbing. <laughs> yeah, it's very disturbing. Very disturbing. Uh, we also got us. Uh, it, it's actually kind of an interesting story here. Um, I don't. I'm not generally speaking a fan of comic strips. Uh, we talk about them very rarely okay, on do the you, podcast. Do you, do you like Far Side? I mean, I used to do like, like. Do you like Calvin and Hobbes, Garfield? Not really. What's wrong with you? I mean. <clears throat> I used to love Far Side. Okay, Far Side, Far absolutely, awesome. absolutely. Back in the day, was my favorite in like the eighties and nineties. Um, I read. I mean, I read them. I read Far Side. I mean, I read Calvin Hobbes. Mm. I read Peanuts. I, I mean, I read whatever was in the papers, right? Yeah. But I, I didn't stick with them the way I stuck with comics. Like, yeah. I really didn't follow them. I don't follow web comics hardly at all. I don't follow the. Uh, I mean, these are all online now. All these comic strips yeah. you can get online. Uh, I don't really follow any of these uh, these days. The only one I kind of did go back on. Uh, is IDW and it's still to this day is releasing some fantastic collections of uh, Dick Tracy, mm. and I, I'm a big fan of the the I was a big fan of the comic strip in the movie, and I went back and and got a bunch of the early collections of the early stories, and I do like that stuff a lot. I'm not opposed to them, I just didn't stick with it. Uh, so I've never heard of Pearls Before Swine before. This is apparently a, a more yeah. recent comic web uh, uh, comic strip series, but it uh. Last week, it got quite a bit of uh, news coverage because there was someone else that was uh, doing some art on the series uh, for a few days that uh, wasn't the traditional artist, and no one knew who it was until uh, after the, the final strip ran, 
uh, the writer uh, and artist uh, Stephen uh, Pastis uh, came out and said that it was Bill Watterson, uh, creator of Calvin Hobbes, mm-hmm. who, as far as anyone else has known, hasn't done comic strip work in... Since 96, I, is that, 95? Yeah, 96, 97, something like that. When something did it end? Like that, yeah, 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 whenever Calvin mm-hmm. Hobbes ended. So, <clears throat> uh, crazy I want to say he did some, some uh, just Calvin Hobbes uh, for charity. Okay, maybe. Yeah, uh, but not actual strip work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, on his blog, there's a pretty interesting story of how he ended up getting a hold of them. And 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 uh, Bill Watterson actually pitched him to, to do this. So, it was like... I, you know, this guy is, you know, this is, this is this is the holy grail, right? I mean, this is ridiculous. Hell yeah. Who the hell would ever thought Bill Waters would come back to do this strip, let alone, you know, completely uncredited and everything. Yeah. So just, he yeah, just it. yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally random. So super cool for this I guy. Even, even the guy was like, I, I, I thought I had more of a chance to work with uh, Schultz before I do yeah. with Bill. And yeah. he goes, I know that Schultz is dead. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. 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 So... It's yeah. kind of cool because the the little girl that represents Bill is named Libby, and the reason why they named her that is also uh, shortened as Lib. Reverse that is Bill. almost Bill. Right, yeah, right, yeah. Right. So I thought that was kind of neat. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's super cool stuff. Like I'm not I'm not against Calvin Hobbes. I mean, I used to read it all the time, but I just didn't like. I mean, people really got attached to mm-hmm. Calvin and Hobbes. I it's freaking awesome. Yeah, I just didn't stick with it when I got older. Like, I didn't keep reading it. Yeah. Well, we already know there's plenty of things wrong with you. Right? It's okay. <laughs> well, I need to go back and get that because they, they collected all of them together, right? In yeah, nice I don't little, really like, like that collection set. to be honest. I, I think it's uh, you know maybe for Charlie it's fine, but for me they're just a tad bit too, <laughs> a big. too big. Yeah, yeah I, I kind of like them skinnier and well, it, my, it's a nice collection. But my problem with the Calvin and Hobbes like at least trade paperback collections was they were always like a different size no like there's the square like size and then there's the the, the, the letterbox tall? size okay. yeah there's like two and i want to say there was a reason for it i, I want to say the one is one and the other one was like maybe the sunday ones yeah so yeah there was two sizes but i don't care i like them either way yeah, calvin hobbs stuff, is man. awesome hell yeah calvin hobbs is awesome uh also kind of a little outside our, our typical wheelhouse here but uh we, yeah, we, we like to we like to just go all wild today. Well, this is we're talking the, about penises. <laughs> then we're talking about comics. Well, and, trust and, me, we'll get to the same normal boring crap we talk about pretty soon. Here, we can talk about E three if you guys want. There's no geek box this week. Yeah. So what is there really Might to talk well. about E three? I've been watching press press conferences all day today. <laughs> Should we go uh, back and go? Arrow is awesome. Arrow sucks. And Avengers yeah, awesome. Yeah, Avengers yeah, sucks. Yeah, yeah. No, let's actually talk about some other stuff today. Uh, um, uh, where was I? Oh yeah, here we go. Um. A my personal favorite Disney character celebrated uh-huh. his birthday today. Oh, I thought it was a girl. Eighty oh. years old, oh. Donald Falteroy Duck. Yeah. So that's not too far. That's my boy, huh? Not he, Jafar. It, it, Jafar. It, it, Jafar's <laughs> awesome. I love Jafar. That, that really explains a lot about Ryan. He really likes a cartoon character with no pants. Uh, no, he, well, it's more thinking how he's complaining all the time. No, this he's the true. asshole. I always like the asshole, all right? So you, you like Daffy Dak too, uh, uh, Daffy. Uh, Gonzo's not really the asshole, but he's definitely the most kind of... He's the awkward one. The awkward down one, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Eeyore, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, not the asshole, but he's he's that. Yeah, he's the I, emo I've, one. I've met a real life Eeyore. Have I told you this? <laughs> no. Dude, I swear to God. I mean, I met a lot of the Vinnie the Pooh characters in real life. I met like Vinnie the Pooh. He had like a round face. He had the eyebrows kind of nicked like that. So he looked like yeah. freaking the Pooh, right? Yeah. I met Piglet. I met uh, yeah, a whole bunch of them. But Eeyore took the cake. I mean, there's this dude that I worked on on set, and he is a sound guy. And he's older, so his, his skin was kind of like you know cheeky on the side. Yeah, uh, he had he had you know kind of grayish you know long hair. It had a little a little bow tie at the end of the, the long hair on one end, and you yeah. know a little goatee. And he had the the gla- reading glasses around, you know on his nose. And then I was like, "Man, how's it going?" He goes, "Well, I don't know, man. It's <laughs> just fine. everything just sucks today. <laughs> you know, you wouldn't say Eeyore things, but it was like if Eeyore was real, this dude was it. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah." That's great. After meeting him, I'm like, fuck, man, I should have taken pictures of all these people. And Tigger is Omar, so. Yeah, yeah. So, there you go. No, uh, Donald's always been my guy. It's funny because we went to Disneyland recently. I was, like, searching for Donald stuff, and this, they don't have much these days. It's did weird. Did you take a picture of Donald, the dress-up guy? I did, yeah. I found, like, was he scared of you? 
I don't think so. I, well, you, he probably I, was because you stopped I saw, him. I saw a dude st- uh, dressed up as Stitch. I'm like, fuck yeah. I'm going to take a picture yeah, of Stitch. Totally and I think the dude was kind of weirded out. It was like a grown man. It's like, come take a picture of me. Oh, I'm, I'm not a little kid or no, a cute I'm, girl. I'm sure they're totally fine with it. So, yeah, uh, me and Leanne took a picture. But, yeah, it was, it, was, it was weird because I noticed when we went a while back that there, wasn't a, that there really wasn't a lot of Donald Duck stuff there. I thought that was kind of strange. And when we went back to this last yeah. time, I actually... They're phasing him out. I get the maybe they're like, oh, he's an asshole. You, we can't have him here at Disneyland. We have to only have good yeah. people. So. They're phasing him out like fan, they're, Marvel's phasing out Fantastic Four. Apparently, oh, is that your uh, is that your segue? segue? That was my segue. Uh, well, before we go there, though, I, I gotta say Donald Duck was one of those characters I always hated when I was younger. Really? Yeah, I I kind of I despised him. The voice, or just just him, and you know, I, I despised Staffy. I didn't <sighs> like Gonzo. I don't what? like any. <laughs> No, I certainly no no <laughs> but fight like, after this podcast. But no, no, let me finish. But later in life I actually got to appreciate them a lot more in a different light. Well, because I real- think they're in my mind, they're the they're a bit of a deeper character. Yeah, than, yeah, yeah. As yeah. a kid I didn't appreciate them. I can see like that. later in life I, I really that. started to like them a lot. And yeah. Like more so than the ones I grew up with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I, all of these. I mean like I have a gonzo coffee mug now that I drink out of in the morning. But <laughs> nice. as a kid I'm like, he's a I motherfucker. Have, I don't wanna <laughs> I have a Donald coffee mug that I drink out of every nice. morning. So there you go. Nice. Perfect. I don't have a coffee mug. I drink out of every morning. You should. I don't drink coffee. That's what's wrong with you. You absolutely should drink coffee. I eat an apple. I seriously don't remember a time before drinking coffee. I do. It's probably because you were I mean, asleep I, I for know most it, of it. I know it existed, <laughs> but like I can't. So I don't you, even know how I started. Are you, are you saying that you drank coffee before you were before you read comic books? No, I mean, I like mean, you were eleven or ten. I like, don't even know how I started drinking coffee. It just sort of happened. Well, I'm still not drinking real coffee. I'm still doing my my fruity, uh, sugared, uh, ice cold uh, oh. mocha stuff. But, yeah, I'm gonna do that too, but. Yeah. I can't I just, drink the real stuff. Oh, oh I have. But to. I make my, my my veggie smoothies in the mornings, and yeah, and yeah. orange juice is still one of my regulars here and dead. Well, uh, I, I love Donald Duck. So I saw oh, that yeah. this, I saw that this morning that it was his birthday today. I was like, oh, that's that's great. So I, I Facebook had to tell you again was, when somebody's birthday it, was. It did. It, it, it did. It, did. <laughs> it was it was one of my highlights when there was that that uh, Ducktales episode where Donald Duck sh- showed up. Oh it was yeah, like, yeah. It was yeah, one yeah. of my highlights because like, where the hell is he? And they explained why he wasn't there. Like he was like on a ship working on a ship. Speaking of Ducktales and, and and Donald for that matter. Um, so I may have mentioned this on the podcast a while ago. I don't. I don't that remember they should not. release Quack Pack on DVD. I don't remember Quackback. Oh, it's cool. Is that the later it's one? Like, it's like DuckTales after DuckTales, but with Donald and the kids. Huh, okay. And they're like a little older. I kind of like I liked it. Huh. Uh, Fantagraphics has been reissuing, not in chronological order, but at the end, they will be in chronological order. Uh, all the Carl Barks, Donald Duck, and uh, Uncle Scrooge collections. Oh, nice. So his entire run... In order, they're basically going like volume two, volume ten, volume eight, volume twelve. Oh, okay, that's but kind of just, cool. just to pick out the but that's still cool. The though. better story arcs, yeah, 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 that's still cool because people get to pick and choose, and, and then, then, and then the they're hardcore they're, ones get to finish to their get them all right, yeah. and they're filling them all in. So, yeah. so by the end, they're gonna have well, uh, because those... they could put at lower print runs on the ones that don't sell as much. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the thing is the bigger stories are the early ones they do, and those will be the those will have the um the the longer. Uh, they probably they'll reprint and you know bring it back in print yeah. and everything like that. But then for the uh, the later ones where they're probably not as popular than those, yeah, like you said, they can. Well, just let those and you also print. these also stories don't necessarily need to be read in order. Not really. They're yeah, kind of like standalone yeah. stories. Anyway, well, so. the ones that need to be read in order a little bit more is Don Rosa, who yeah. was after Call Barks. Mm-hmm. He came. I want to say when did he? St- See, I don't think Dark. I grew up with any of those. I think I grew up with the Italian side of it. Late eighties, maybe. Like, because yeah. Karl Barks did stuff through, let's say, through the sixties in some fashion. So you had a big chunk where there wasn't these guys. But uh, Don Rosa took over. I'm looking up here. So it's like eighty seven, I think. Uh, he did all the Donald Duck stuff and um, Uncle Scrooge, uh, Scrooge stuff for like twenty years. Yeah. And his entire collection is being put into a, a complete in order. Uh, Trade paperback series as well from oh, Fantagraphics. Cool. So, yeah, super, super cool. If you're a Donald Duck fan, totally grab those because you're totally going to grab them. I have them all. I have them all so far. There's only six of them out so far, uh, but it's like 50 volumes total or something ridiculous between the two collections. It's, gonna, it's like the peanut stuff, right? It's going to take 
20 years to come for everything to come out or 15 <laughs> years or something. It's going to take forever. Yeah. But uh, but a couple of years is, is worth it. So, yeah, yeah, very excited for that. Back to some more slightly traditional comic news here mm-hmm. that, we, that, we, that we know we like talking about here. Uh, I want to say last time we talked briefly about uh, that uh, they Wait, lost. I think that destroys the segue there. Yeah, I think. I think oh, the fantastic! Lost, well, I think you lost the. the oh yeah, you're oh, we'll back to because that was that was some thing. semblance of news. Well, <coughs> let, let's, let's cover it. Let's do some TV stuff and, and, and uh, movie stuff first. I don't remember last time we were talking Doctor Fate. Yeah. Oh, that's come. The last time we were talking, we mentioned that uh, we had lost the direct. We. Marvel had lost the director. We lost the director for Ant Man. <laughs> yeah, the, the Marvel had lost the director for Ant Man. Uh, but they actually did sign. Uh, oops, I had the strong one. Uh, they signed Peyton Reed to direct the Ant Man movie, replacing Eddie Wright. Uh, he directed Yes Men, Down with Love, The Breakup, and other movies I've never heard of. Mm. Uh, and it is being... well, these are all movies you watch, Brock? Though, isn't it? <laughs> I, I seen Brock's yeah, Breakup. Yeah, I knew. What was the first Brock's one? love of romantic comedies. Yeah. Uh, I haven't watched any romantic comedies in a while. Yes, man. Down with love and the breakup. I think I've only seen the breakup. And uh, it looks like it'll be co-written by Adam McKay, who worked on Anchorman. So oh, good. Ah, uh, Anchorman's hilarious. Whatever. <laughs> what do you mean, whatever? Anchorman's freaking. I haven't seen the second one. I heard the second one it wasn't so good. I love the first one though. I'm, I'm not a big Will Ferrell fan. Uh, I mean, I he's hit or miss, but I, I generally like, I like Paul his Rudd. Stuff. I like Steve Carell. Yeah, but like, it's really hard for me to watch a movie that has Will Ferrell like as Will the Ferrell. Head, headliner guy. I like Will Ferrell. So, listen, Ant Man's back on schedule. Uh, I mean, at this point, I don't think you know, you know, your baby could direct the movie. It's coming out one way <laughs> or another. Son could direct the movie. I mean, it's yeah, it's coming out July seventeenth next year, one way or another. Yeah. Regardless, you know, if they're going to get a janitor to direct it, so. Just videotape ants crawling on the ground and a guy walking. <laughs> walking yeah, I, the, I don't know. Yeah, I mean Marvel's not gonna not gonna let these movies slip. So, uh, Toby, if you, do you know this director at all? Does it, does it matter at all? I mean, losing Edgar oh, Wright, I, I still want Eckler to come back. One should now, blow up. Now, why did he? Wright? Why did he leave yeah. again? Don't know. Creative I never said differences. Creative differences. Yeah. yeah, I I don't know. I mean, all these movies I never even heard of. But you like Edgar Wright. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, the new guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. like, I, I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, without Edgar Wright, it goes from my must-see movie of the year, well, one of two, another great Marvel movie that I hope rocks. Yeah. But, you know, yeah, Edgar Wright is, is, is absolutely fantastic, so. Are we actually talking TV news? Uh, Well, there's one more big Marvel movie. Okay. Uh, Cause, rumor. Cause you, said, you said TV news, and now we're talking movie news. I said movie and TV news. Oh, okay. One big Marvel rumor. And if this doesn't happen, I'm going to be so disappointed. Because I know it's not going to happen. And I'm always going to think about this and be like, oh. Spider-Man with a penis? What if it could be? <laughs> what if it could be? Benedict Cumberbatch. Huh. Early rumor for Doctor Strange. That would be awesome. How perfect. Now, I'm not... One of these fanboys that's like, Bernard Cumberbatch should be every character ever. No, I don't believe that. I, I don't, you know. I could see him as Spider-Man. What the heck is the guy from Serenity? What's what's the one all the nerds love? What's the uh, main guy? Yeah, you know who I'm talking about. Green that guy. Lantern. Yeah, no. Nathan Fillion? Yeah, Nathan Fillion. Yeah, he's Green Lantern. Yeah, Nathan Fillion. Everyone, oh, Nathan Fillion should be every character ever. No, I get it. I don't ever think that okay, way. Okay, here's a, here's a question. But Benedict Cumberbatch is Doctor, Doctor Strange. Strange work. That is yeah. perfect. Now, now, if you could cast him... In a, as a DC character, who would you cast him as? Catwoman. Ben, pff, Benedict Cumberbatch? Yeah. John Constantine in a heartbeat. And nice. Yeah, hell yeah. Well, I mean, there's not, there's not a ton of British. There's not a ton of British. Well, it doesn't need to be British. Or, He's an actor. He can do a different accent. Yeah, but, but I mean... I could totally see him he could being be a badass Riddler, Ashley. I mean, mm-hmm. he's he's a, I mean, maybe a bit tall for some of those roles, but I don't see John Constantine as, like, super tall. Would, but, you, would you like him as the elongated man? I... Actually, I could really see that too. I, yeah, I, I get I, one of those. Get one of those little, uh, little Doctor Who, uh, 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 whatever female characters to play his wife. <laughs> you like that? See, I see, could actually think s- it a little harder. It works. I actually could see. Yeah, I mean, you know, you switch up. You know, we switch them. I uh, switch them up to being British, but I'm fine with that. Well, you know, it doesn't, ha- like, it doesn't have to be British, man. But. 
it's hard for sometimes it's hard for people. You're not the only one mentioned. Though. Drop his accent. Yeah, Tom Hardy, but I don't see Tom Hardy. Oh, at all. What? No. Yeah, that's I don't, a bizarre one. Yeah, I don't see Tom Hardy at all. I, I want to see. A, I read an article over the weekend that mentioned someone else that would be perfect for it, but I can't remember who it is right now. <laughs> I thought that was pretty. Yeah. Good. I don't, uh, oh, I don't. Uh, Oberyn from uh, Game of Thrones. I could see him too. Who is it? Oh, the, the spoiler, the last, the Oberyn. Well, don't, don't spoil anything about Game oh, of Thrones. Oberyn. Oh. Oberyn? The, vi- the Viper. Oh, oh, sure, sure. I could see uh, him. Okay, okay. The, the, the Red Viper or whatever. Hashtag there was a fight in Game of Thrones. Ugh, Brock, just stop talking. Shh. Yeah, Oberyn, I think he would make a really good uh, Doctor Strange, actually. I could see that. I could yeah. see that. I could yeah. see that. Yeah, I don't know. Plus, I just kind of want him in a Marvel movie, too. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think. Uh, yeah, I, I I could see that. I, I like I like Cumberbatch's Doctor Strange though. To me, that seems just about perfect. All right, now for that. As long as it's not too Sherlocky. Nah. Well, I mean, that would be kind of. I I think that would be kind of part of the appeal is him, you know, being mm. uh, that that Sherlock style would work for Doctor Strange. Yeah. The mystical. Not, not the same. Not the same plots, but I mean, his, his the way he played Sherlock. Mm. Very cold, very calculating, with a bit of humor. You know, that's very marvelous, right? A little goofiness on the side. Now, how big do you think his collar's going to be? Well, I mean, he's already a tall guy, so his collar <laughs> can just, just just totally do it up. Okay, on to, on to more TV news. Yeah, and now Brock's, now Brock's big, uh, your, your big TV news is, uh, uh, or I'm sorry, Toby's big TV news is that we have our first tease of a potential uh, first crossover character into the Hellblazer or Constantine. From Smallville out of all show. places. What? Oh, no. Yeah. Who's in Smallville? Yeah, I know. I'm Who's joking. in Smallville? Dr. Fate. Dr. Uh, Fate. Oh, wow, oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> I thought you meant like they're having someone from Dr. Fate. No, uh, the helmet of Dr. Fate yeah. is in this new trailer for, for Constantine. And now I'm officially done watching everything about this show <laughs> because I just want to watch the show. They've already shown so much. Like that Superman Flash trailer. Superman in the next trailer. Jesus. That Flash trailer showed the entire episode. Yes. And I'm kind of bummed I watched it. Yes. So this, I'm like, all right, I'm done. I'm, I don't want to see anything else. I don't want to see anything else. Maybe they will show the pilot and the next episode on the same night so you actually have some fresh material. Uh, I, I can see them doing that. I mean, this, it's been done before, especially because, it, well, it's starting in October. It October got pushed, 24th. It got pushed back a little bit, so... Mm. I could I could see them doing that if they wanted to. So so your October no, no, Constantine. No, no, Constantine. Oh. Constantine. So your weekends are going to be Friday night Constantine and then Sunday night Walking Dead. It's going to be some interesting stuff. Well, they're definitely playing it up that every day of the week there's going to be a Marvel movie or a, a DC uh uh, TV show and, and you know they're playing up all across different yeah. dates and everything so or different days of the week like DC or just comic related which is very interesting what's that DC only or comic related well I would well you know I could see AMC splitting Preacher off onto a different day and not having the same well I don't are, there, are, there, are, are, are they doing Preacher at the same time they're doing Walking Dead no but I mean I could I see I thought them. that was going to be an off it could be like, a, uh, like, like it was Walking Dead for half the year and then Preacher for half the well, year well Five, ten weeks. Yeah. Yeah, I could see them doing that. Keep it the same night, maybe. Keep yeah, that, I mean, keep that, that night be, going. That'd be a good night to keep going. Well, with, um, with yeah, what's yeah, called... Yeah, talking, preaching. <laughs> Preacher talking. <laughs> God, so stupid. I never... Do you watch those? Sometimes. It depends yeah. on the guests. I never watch them. I don't get it. It's not bad. They're not bad. I mean, it's, some, it's sometimes nice to kind of get insight from... I, it, really, it really and, depends on the guest. Yeah. I mean, when they had uh, was a Merlin Mansion on it, that, that was, was oh, that was genius. That guy was so out there. Uh, like God. you watch it go what? Yeah, Where Merlin Manson, I will say this, has gotten fat. Yeah, yeah. This guys get old. It happens to the best of us. So the one of the weirder comic stories I've heard in a while uh, surfaced last week. Like all the community friends are on talking something. Are they? Oh, they're there all the time. I huh. actually kind of like them a lot. They're mm-hmm. they're pretty funny. On I there. should just finish com- this last season of Community. Wow. It was pretty good. Fast and Furious guy is talking about maybe making him in a movie of Community. Yeah, huh. because he's directed quite a few episodes. Well, there's gonna be that uh, supposed sixth season oh, on really? Hulu. Yeah, and their tagline has been six seasons in a movie. <laughs> so nice if we get a six season on Hulu and then a movie community. <laughs> then, I, I'd, be be I'd be down with that. I'd be down with that. 
All right, so so one of the weirder comic news stories I've heard in a while uh, came last week from Bleeding Cool, where a lot of this stuff comes from, that uh, Marvel has been in the process of taking down a lot of the artwork in their offices featuring the Fantastic Four, has been telling creators to not use the characters, uh, has been telling artists for their uh, sketch cards for all their uh, non, non-sports card sets to not use the Fantastic Four or Silver Surfer, Galactus, characters like that. Uh, uh, Mr. Fantastic, Invisible Woman, Thing, Human Torch, Doctor Doom, Galactus, Silver Surfer, The Watcher, and The Skrulls. Uh, that seems to be the official list here. Uh, plus, uh, you know, some others here that they're not supposed to use. Uh, and there's rumor the Fantastic Four and Ultimate FF are both being canceled and completely taken off the schedule. Marvel has replied that this is preposterous and there is a, a major event coming up featuring the Fantastic Four and why would they ever stop using their um, original characters? But they kind of really beat around the bush in some of these replies about, no, we are not canceling the Fantastic Four comics. Like, they never actually said that. No, no, they said, the big event's coming up. But it's, that it, doesn't answer my question. <laughs> yeah, so they all die. Done. Yeah, done. Boom, boom, well, boom. So it's, you know, the, the, the idea here is that they're playing kind of hardball with Fox to get the rights back to the Fantastic Four movie or do this. Did you guys hear this rumor that Sony and Disney may be splitting Spider-Man 3, splitting mm. some of the revenue from it in order to put Spider-Man in Avengers 3? Mm. This is a weird rumor. No idea if this is true or not. Uh, there are no X-Men toys or no Fantastic Four toys or no Spider-Man toys for the movies. Nothing. Mm-hmm. Completely cut out. This mm. is Marvel and Disney just playing hardball and just being like, nope, you get nothing but the movie. You can't license shit. All right? That's, that's where a lot of this seems to be coming from. Mm-hmm. And Fantastic Four, you know, I mean, when you think about it, they're not going to cancel Spider-Man. They're not going to cancel X-Men because those books are just too popular. Mm-hmm. But for a little bit of a dig, because let's be honest, the two Fantastic Four movies made $750 million in the box office. And them canceling a comic book that sells 30,000 copies a month doesn't matter to anyone. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's no promotion there, but it like is a sort of symbolic cancellation. I could see them being like, we are going to... We are going to... Uh, well, especially with the Fantastic Four movie they're going to make. Uh, yeah, right, right, well, actually, right. Actually, it doesn't even matter. They can still put out, put out their book, and it's completely different from what we hear. Right, right. But, you know, who knows what they're going to... Who knows what they're going to do with it. Yeah. So, you know, this feels like a weird... This feels very much like cutting off your nose and spreading your face, because canceling a Fantastic Four comic or sidelining those characters doesn't affect Fox in the least bit. In no way, shape, or form affects them. What Marvel should do is they should put out the absolute best Fantastic Four comic they've ever published, because it hasn't been so good in recent years, and give that and use that as leverage to Fox to be like, hey, let's split it, or hey, we want to base it off this, we're going to buy it back from you. You know, because Disney could throw that money around if they really want to. It's a big property, but I think they could take it back. So yeah, I'm, <clears throat> I think that that with you know when Marvel was was before Disney bought Marvel and stuff, and they they were they were going to Fox and they were going to Sony and they were going to you know all these companies to to make these well, movies. They didn't go there, they just licensed. Well, yeah, they licensed it out. But that's the thing is, is like now that that it's that there's a Marvel studio, there's a Marvel Studios, a story. And, and, and also even before Disney even had yeah, and so it's like you. You, it, it's kind of this big building thing, and they want to move it in that direction. But again, it's like Fox isn't moving, but they're not moving with it. Like if that whole thing with Sony is true, where they're kind of like splitting, kind of like I still production think stuff. Just open up their piggy banks and just be like, oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 just yeah. give us all the shit back. Yeah. Uh, breaking news from the end of the PlayStation press conference or the, the Sony press conference here. Does it is start that- with a K and end in the zone? No, Damn is it. that is that uh, Powers, the I believe twice now canceled pilot <laughs> from Brian Michael Bendis, uh, based on based game. on the comic book, is coming exclusive to PlayStation with Sony Pictures, backed by an all star production team. So Sony picked up the rights to the Powers TV show, and uh, is going to be putting this out. So it's um, a lot of Netflix, right? Uh, you know. <sighs> 
I'm just going to assume this is never actually going to happen because it's already been dropped twice by other by other people. Uh, it'd be weird for them to put this out now. I don't know. I, I have no interest in it. I mean, I've read the Powers comic for a while, but I did not stick with it. It didn't do anything for me, and especially that was around the time. It was, I was huge just, for a while. It was, but it was around the time where I was really just out, out for Mendes. I'm back now, but I don't care, so... So, yep. There you go. Awesome. I got nothing else. That's uh, that Fantastic Four news, though. It if, if it nothing comes of it, nothing comes of it. But what a weird story! Like I, I don't get that at all. I don't get that at all. What do you What do you got? I mean, does it make sense? You're you just worried that you got no books to sell. No, it doesn't. No, I mean, it, it, it's thirty. Well, uh, it doesn't sell that well anyway. Yeah, it doesn't so it sell doesn't that matter. well anyway. So it's 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 just it <sighs> seems like something so trivial to be fighting over when yeah like you said toby i mean disney can just open up their wallet and buy the rights back where it's Hopefully. like you know I, don't know I mean i'm just talking like i know what i'm talking about but maybe that's not even possible so i don't yeah. know I, i'm assuming you throw enough money at it and anything's possible i guess yeah i don't know um well i i always felt it was weird that certain books had to be always be out on the shelves i mean when something is just not good and hasn't been for a while I have no problem with them shelving it. I mean, I you know the comics. Yeah, it, it, but that's so unlike the companies. They will never shelve a product. I know, right? but why not? I mean, like if you don't they have should. any good ideas, like put yeah. it on the shelf for a while. Sure. I'm not saying don't ever do it again. Have someone come up with a great idea and bring it back, like yeah, full yeah, force. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never understood why there's always. I mean, doors sometimes didn't exist. Yeah. Right. There were yeah, there were been on periods of the time when there was no Thor comic. So why can't there be no Fantastic Four comic and have them come up with better ideas and then come back strong? Right. 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 So I, I never. I mean, yeah, sure. There's always going to be a Spider Man, I guess. But you know what yeah. I mean, though. It's yeah. like if the stories are not there, why force it out? Yeah. 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 It's so weird. Yeah. I, I can't. I don't. I don't get this story. Like I said, I don't sound like I'm saying the same thing. But man, what a weird ass story. Well, let's, let's get some questions here. How about that? Can Marvel do Fantastic Four TV show? <coughs> or is it just all media? No, I, think it's, I think it's media rights go for Don't know. film. They have so cartoons. Different. It's animation. Yeah, Disney owns the, owns the rights to those cartoons now. Because they're, they're the uh. ones that publish the, the DVDs. But, but. I don't know. I think, it, I think it just depends. Like Film, I think, covers TV and movies. And animation covers... And maybe separate. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a separate thing because it's it, the creative process is different. Uh, let's get a question here from Matthew who asks. Hello, Matthew. I'm always interested in hearing who's people's favorite, who, who people's favorite dark versions of a hero is, like Dark Phoenix or Parallax. You guys got a favorite dark hero? Yes. Or, or dark version of a hero? Yes. Peter who's Parker. That? Peter Parker? <laughs> Not from Spider-Man 3. Which, uh, the, which Peter Parker <laughs> Uh, when P- he, which, which Peter Parker? <laughs> well, you know, in the Clone Saga, there so, no, I'm kidding. Uh, I, I really liked it when he was wearing the black suit. When oh, yeah. when kind of went darker sure. and he was kind of not silly anymore. I really lo- loved the, the black suit time when he was wearing the, the symbiote suit. And later on, I think he was just wearing the costume. I mean, he was just, the book was just dark. I mean, visually it was darker. He went darker. Uh, the storytelling went a little more mature. I kind of liked all of that era of, of, of Spider-Man books. More recently, Superior Spider-Man. There you go. Yeah, uh, definitely Parallax for me. I love Parallax. Uh, that's a great choice right off the bat, and uh, I will, I will, I will rep that one. Brock, you got anyone? Uh, I mean, this is this is counter to things like uh, Eradicator or uh, Bizarro Superman, things like that. Like like a, like a hero's bad persona version. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, nothing really sticks out right now. The dickhead Superman in Superman Three. <laughs> He's great. And Richard Pryor. Uh, Joshua asks, "How do you guys like the Court of Owls?" Uh, talking about the Batman arc mm. from the start of the New Fifty Two. I like the idea of the city being controlled since uh, since its beginning. You know that actually, I think that was the point that a lot of people hated. What that these guys were supposed to be there from the beginning, and Batman's gone around for X amount of years without ever seeing them. I actually thought it was a great idea. Um, they've kind of. Used them a lot since, 
Mm. I felt like something that should have been a kind of once you took out took them out, they should have kind of been done at that point. Done or, or gone into uh, hiding or. But they still use them a lot. Yeah. So, but I still I love the idea. They're this, well, the best new addition to Batman villains probably since Bane. Uh, I mean, I, I think they are a great. See, I, haven't, idea. I haven't read any of that yet. I I was confused on actually where to start <laughs> since like Charlie is telling me certain issues have the same issues in the trade and and, and read Batman volumes one and two. That's all yeah. you got to read. But there's like no multiple Batman Volume Ones and Twos, isn't it? Batman, like... No Man's Land, or um, No Man's Land, uh, Ooh, Court of Owls and City now. of Owls, just okay. Volumes One That's and it? Two. That's yeah. it. Night Owls is all the crossover. Isn't stuff. there like a big one that has like more stuff? That's all that's the crossover the night stuff. Of, that's the yeah. Night of the Owls. That's the that's the crossover stuff from all the Bat Family books. Yeah. Um, I hmm. I've really enjoyed what Scott Snyder's done with the Batman universe, especially with Gotham. I mean, starting with uh, Gates of Gotham, that mini he did a few years ago. Um, kind of going back into the yeah, history of Gotham yeah, and how it was built and yeah, stuff. That's kind of tied so, in as well. I think that, <clears throat> I think that, uh, and even all the the stuff from All Star Western that ties in during that time period, kind of showing the yeah, like their 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 influence in that time and kind of how they they their whispers yeah, yeah, yeah. that they're around. I, I I think it's a great idea. It gives it gives more depth to Gotham as a city itself. Yeah, because most people view Gotham as just the crime ridden. You know, city that yeah, you know, yeah. Batman goes around and stops people from stealing TVs and cars and all this stuff. But when in actuality, there's a lot more going on with you know, secret society people, with the crime or with the mafia families, with you know, like all everything that encompasses crime or evil and stuff happens in Gotham. So, Court of Owls was just a great addition to kind of that secret society thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think there's a lot of secret societies, so I think you have to be, uh, careful uh you know how many of these guys you bring in but uh i i like the court of all so they did a good uh, great job with it so hey you know what they could be the new hydra <sighs> i mean they're different but uh, i mean they're like reanimated people right so well that's the talents the the court or well that's their group yeah, yeah the court the, are just the rich court are just people, rich rich people, people that that yeah. that manipulate the city and yeah and events and stuff like that the talons are their their weapons yeah and how they they execute that, but I, I actually haven't read reread Court of Owls yet. I'm all of the Batman hardcovers are sitting on my shelf, going read me, read me, read me. But I just haven't. <laughs> I haven't. I haven't gotten the stomach to t- tackle it yet. <laughs> uh, Jackie wrote in and said, "Sup, dudes. Sup. Hello. I think I read all the. I think I read all the major recommended Hellblazer arcs. Any favorites or overlooked stories I may have missed? Well, this would be a good time for me to plug Hellblazer Volume One: Original Sin, <laughs> which is our. Uh, it's your, which is my uh, book club pick of the month. So go pick that up and check that out. Uh, yeah, I mean, I really. It, I've only read like I think four of the volumes. I still need to. I mean, they're nice." Sizes and it's twenty bucks a pop, which is which is a good price point. Yeah, but it's one of those things where it's like I'm kind of waiting for a decent buffer to be like, oh, they're on like twelve or thirteen, which means they're going to keep going to thirty versus yeah, 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 oh yeah, versus you know, and I, th- I mean that that hurts me at the same time because if they're not necessarily selling very well, then they might just cancel it. No, I think they're going to go all the way. So, I, I mean, my. My number one recommendation by far and away is all the Garth Ennis stuff. He's got a long run through, I want to say, like 50s, mid 60s. I can't remember what issue number he started at. Uh, he had a good run. You know, actually, shortly after him, Paul Jenkins did a run that I think is criminally underrated. It didn't get collected. As far as I know, none of his stuff got collected. Goes through issue 100 into like 120s, 130s or so. He, I, I really liked his arc. Uh, he did some good stuff. There's issue 27, I believe it is, which is the Neil Gaiman, Dave McKean issue. That is, of course, a personal favorite of mine. So uh, I know people have a real love-hate relationship with the Brian Azzarello run later in the late 100s, maybe leading up to like 200. 150 to 200, I think. Somewhere in that range, yeah. I know people kind of have a love-hate with that, but uh, yeah, I think it's worth reading just because Azzarello is such a unique voice. So. Well, I mean, Hell- I mean, Hellblazer has had really good talent on it. They've had the you best know, talent in comics, not Hellblazer, throughout the years, just you know, at very times. Yeah, at very times, and it's it. I mean, it's overall, it's it might not be your liking at some points, but I think just the character kind of keeps going. And I think somebody brought up this week. I think it was Gage brought up that the the tone and the voice kind of 
of Constantine in those early Swamp Thing books is very kind of uh, confident and cocky, and and he comes across very you know as an like a true asshole. Yeah. But in those early issues, it's kind of that voice isn't there. It's a bit different, yeah. So, um, so yeah, I, I mean, it. I I've been enjoying them. I'm, I'm picking them up little by little, but. You know, I, I I'm actually gonna look for. I'm looking forward to rereading Original Sin. Yeah. yeah. So, speaking of uh, Original uh, Sin, well, no, I was speaking of nothing. I, okay. nothing. I just <laughs> want to talk about Forever Evil here. Um, cause we got a couple more questions here, but I figure we should talk about Forever Evil Seven because we didn't actually get a chance to talk about it the well, other week. We we we, we gleamed over. We it. We did a very quick uh, talk. But this is, uh, and we'll talk original sin too when that wraps up. And if you know, yeah. God, in like a month, original man, sins. Hey, that that book is hauling some ass. Oh yeah. Uh, unlike DC's much delayed original sin number seven, uh, or, or, or original forever sin, evil, forever evil number seven. Original sin is going to be on number seven next week or something. Jeez, I swear the book is just coming out like every time I blink. Uh, Toby, did you get a chance to finish Forever Evil? You finished reading that up? Mm. No, at this point, I'm just going to pick up the trade. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Should be nice hardcover coming yeah, out yeah, soon. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. I kind of lost track of where I read to and where I was keeping up for the first half, and then yeah. I just kind of lost track of where I was. Well, they they do a good job for every evil, so we're going to talk spoilers here for people if they haven't read it um, and want to check out or, or read it, then come back here and listen to the rest of the podcast. You know, I mean, I'm a I'm a big Johns fan, as I'm sure you've all, all you all know. Uh, really? Yeah. <clears throat> To me, though, he really does do these big events better than anyone else. I think this is what I love probably most about him. They're big and bombastic, and they use they use the anti monitor all the time, and I love it. Even though some people I know hate it, that they consistently he consistently goes back to the anti monitor. But that is like the big DC villain, or right? I mean, that is mm-hmm. the big guy. Uh, and you know, especially when they were showing in early issues the Terran space and all that stuff. A lot of people would assume the monitor or anti-monitor in some fashion would show up, kind of a very direct crisis yeah. reference. Uh, I think we talked a little while ago about uh, all these weekly series DC have. They're all ending, the rumor is, they're all ending in March of 2015. April 2015 is the 30th anniversary of Crisis on Infinite Earths. Mm-hmm. So uh, using the monitor, or I'm sorry, the anti-monitor as sort of a lead into this new event makes sense to me yeah uh so you know forever evil just the whole time has been the fight between the justice league and the and the crime syndicate uh bringing them into the new 52 which it feels like man it feels like they've reintroduced the crime syndicate a whole bunch of times in the last handful of years but i don't know that's just me because they reintroduced them uh in the kerpusek jsa or jla Mm -hmm. story as well but uh they go out of their way to actually do some pretty big stuff for Forever Evil. There's some pretty big uh, game changes in this. Uh, the you know the the big one obviously uh, is that well well yeah I guess they're all kind of big. I kind of, kind of go in order here. Uh, besides killing off most of the members of the uh, crime syndicate uh, and so they introduce some of them, kill them all. Oh, a couple of them, yeah. Uh, and power, uh, Superwoman, be, or power, power woman, Superwoman. What the hell do they call Ultra her in this one? Ultra. Ultra woman. Wait, no. <laughs> no, it's all it's Ultraman. Yeah, Superwoman. Uh, having the kid of uh, Alexander Luther. Yeah, no, it's Matt Massus. Hmm. <clears throat> or uh, of, of Alexander Luther, Luther yeah. right? Yeah, the the reverse is him, yeah. uh, which is great too. Uh, no, no, the, the the first awesome thing in this in this book. And, and I think everyone needs to to know this is when Bizarro hugs Lex Luthor. Oh, that's, that's that's a great. That's scene. like the like that's, like, that's the best first thing. Like I no no offense, Toby. I mean, saving Dick's life is great, but but that hug, man, that yeah, was, that was classic. That's a great scene. Uh, but we now have kind of some of the backstory and reasoning to the ch- upcoming changes in Gotham uh, for Nightwing, where he's going to become Grayson. I know Toby's not too happy about this uh, oh. change. And he should have been badass enough to save himself. Uh, well, eh, I mean, Luther kind of put the screws on him. So, you know, Luther's doing what he does. But Luther saved him, so mm-hmm. it's good enough. So we have uh, now undercover Dick Grayson doing something. We don't quite know what his plans are yet, but at least we could kind of lead into that. Uh, we get an awesome scene here of um, Luther killing uh, what uh, Tomica. The little uh, little traitor, Justice League. Member. Oh, stepping on him. Yeah, stepping oh, that, on that him. was that was yeah. awesome. But 
to me, there are two pretty damn big moments in this in this book, other than the last page. First, we have the introduction of Ted Cord oh, to yeah. the New Fifty Two universe. Uh, a young, kind of you know, young hip looking kid runs some you know runs Cord Industries. So took over from his parents. So I'll be curious to see how they're going to bring him into the books. What they're going to do with Ted Cord? Uh, of course, the you know long term potentially bigger story and we'll see where this goes and this leads directly into justice league so if you read justice league before forever evil you're stupid uh because you should always read the big book first is that looks Luthor finds out bruce wayne is batman hmm. oh yes i read so that actually. that's that's how do i know that <laughs> yeah i mean we'll we'll obviously see where that goes you know what they're going to do with this in the upcoming books being new 52 that makes perfect sense though he all should the stuff that's been revealed and likes being kind of a smart dude i mean yeah putting two and two and two and three and together yeah i mean i mean this is one of those characters or he's one of those guys where he should have figured this out a long time ago mm-hmm. yeah in just the regular comics so why he doesn't know you know uh, superman and is well, clark can i mean superman got those magic glasses <laughs> deflections they're not just glasses deflexes they're magic look. glasses i come to realize could be. It's also like uh, He Man's got amazing clothes because well, when he well, takes them off, nobody knows it's him. Well, there's always things like uh, Superman vibrates his face very <laughs> a little bit constantly, so people can't actually get a real clear look really? at him. He puts his voice like down an octave. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this looks like a job for Superman, right? He yeah. does that that voice switch yeah. thing. So and he, he kind of. Um, he doesn't do that. I'm Superman. He can he can be in two. Pla- he can be at one place. He can fly to one place. Who Bruce Wayne can't. Like right, he actually right, has right. to get on the plane right. and go there. So it's like when you're in Hong Kong and you're hijacking some, you know, you're 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 hijacking some technology or something, and Bruce Wayne happens to be there in a business meeting. Yeah, you know. No, I uh, did. You guys notice that uh, Lex was paying uh, Slade Wilson? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That was awesome. Oh well, yeah, I mean he was he was working with them. Yeah, they had him as part of the the uh, not crime well, syndicate, as part of the. Uh, I think what I really like about this the Johns is writing is that he doesn't he doesn't put it in your face like the big reveal, like it just naturally happens when it's supposed to happen, and then it, there's like all these little things that are dropped along the way. For like, what? Well, it's just you know, it, <clears throat> like uh, with the. Um, uh, just the little things like Atomica is trying to escape and you know, Lex steps on her and stuff. And, and you know, he, it's like just little things. It's not focused completely on there. Like there's one panel here at the end that says like going through, Al, but Alman is missing. So Alman is still out there and stuff like that. Like in all this stuff like this, you know, like what are you smiling about? The baby it kicked. Like all these like just little things. Well, yeah, I mean, it's like there. the old school style. Like, yeah, I mean the the book the the main beat of the book ends halfway through, and the last half is kind of just clean up and epilogue and set up. Yeah, which is which is mm. pretty standard for I mean for most books, especially for John. So now, who's talking to the anti monitor? Well, that's the big question. So on the last page and in, in the last two pages, there's a conversation that's kind of being held. Uh, and when you turn to the last page, the Anti Monitor, who many of you may remember is the big bad from Crisis on Infinite mm-hmm. Earths, and he was also in Sinestro Core War and Infinite Crisis, Crisis and a few other books that Johns has written. He's a, obviously a very big fan of the Anti Monitor. Uh, so someone is talking to him. You know, uh, in the comics, he had a few people that worked for him. He had uh, what's his face. Uh, Cyborg. Uh, Cyborg Superman? No, no. Well, he, Cyborg Superman worked for, worked with him in, in Sinestro Core War, right? It was a Sinestro War. Well, because he worked with all of them in Sinestro Core War. He worked. Yeah. It was he was kind of help powering him, and he, and he was the power battery in in Blackest Night. Yeah. So he was helping. No, but in the original, uh, it was. Oh my god, I'm totally drawing a blank. It's not Pariah. It's the other guy oh, with the mask. Uh, Psycho Pirate. Psycho Pirate. Psycho Pirate. Uh, so he worked with Psycho Pirate, so it could be a new 52 version of that, which we've seen in, like, Superboy had him, but that was shitty. Well, uh, the, the funny thing is, is, is the lead up in this is, is they're really interesting, is everyone is, the, they're talking about Darkseid still being out there. Right, he's, and right. he's hunting Darkseid. Right, he's looking for Darkseid, <clears throat> so it's to like, kick his ass. So it's like, it's almost as if they're setting up that, that the Justice League has to team up with Darkseid to, in, to get rid of the Anti Monitor. Well, this could you know. give some reasoning for Darkseid, 
universe jumping and doing all this stuff, it could be he's maybe trying to get away from the Anti Monitor. Mm-hmm. It could be he tried to invade the Anti Monitor's world and was like, <clears throat> "Oh crap, I get to, I'm, I may be Dark Side, but that's the Anti Monitor. Like, I know my limitations. Yeah, and like let's get the hell out of here. So yeah, I uh, don't know. Obviously, I haven't figured out the life equation yet. So yeah, I mean, most people assume this will be. This is lead into the big event next year, so April of next year mm-hmm. should start, which around end of the year, you know, and you know, November, December, we should start to hear kind of what's going on. Obviously, quite a few months out, but uh, yeah, I mean, Forever Evil, you know, I'm mad about the delays. I wish it had come out a little bit sooner, but uh, you know, I think it worked out okay. It's a good story. It's fun. Uh, I actually like David Finch's art. I remember. Um, uh, uh, Omar. Omar and Bryce were complaining about his art. I think his art's his, fine. His it's, art's fine. Uh, um, I don't have the problem with it. They do. I think he at some points in throughout the course of the book, there were there were moments where you could tell it was really rushed. Yeah. Um, but I mean, for the most part, I really enjoy David Finch's artwork. Yeah, so it works. You know, I, I I can forgive. But there are moments where, to me, it, again, you have this artist that needs a little bit of time. In you know, you need to have give them that advanced time yeah. to do it. You you know, if you're not giving willing to give them that advanced time, knowing they're that type of artist, then it's your own fault. Like I don't necessarily blame David Finch completely for the delays in Forever Evil. If you knew this was coming up, you should have had him working on this. All right, you know, that's always how this works. So and they never yeah. do. So whatever. <clears throat> but yeah. Uh, you know, another big event down. Uh, kind of the really the first big DC event. I mean, we've had Villains Month. You know, we have uh, Forever Evil. Or I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Future's mm-hmm. End right now coming up. So They're the Trinity. I, I think this is this Trinity is Trinity War was the lead in. This is a good culmination, kind of 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 what has happened in the New Fifty Two until now. Yeah, and kind of and like you said, we're kind of getting these. You know, the the Future's End kind of thing tying in and kind of seeing what happens next year. You know, I, I think these are all really good kind of titles that are building. Like they've they've done a decent job of building on the big events as they go. It's not like a big event happens and we watch the aftermath and then we're just waiting for the next one. These kind of tend well, to a few build. of the big Marvel events. Uh, and I mean, some of the big DC events have this too, where when they when they end, nothing changes. Yeah. You know, I mean, you have big ones like Civil War, which have large uh, long term ramifications, or House of M. You know, there are Avengers vs. X Men, so there have been some. Uh, this feels like, if nothing else, Luther and Batman, that's a pretty significant change in a lead up to the next big event. That, to me, is, you know, this established uh, kind of the big bad coming up, and it I think it did a good job of finishing up what it was trying to do. You know, uh, why we just need to see what shape the new 52 is in a- yeah. uh, April of next year. Yeah. As we're, I mean, we may have mentioned this in the last podcast, I don't remember, but we're getting close to DC having canceled 52 titles. Yeah. So they've, you know, of all the books they've brought in, I think... The they only left a new, new 52. Yeah, I think it was at 47 or something. The all new, new 52. So we're at, like, 50% of the original titles are still around, but of the 50% percent been been replaced, almost twice over have they also been now been canceled again, which tells you... People don't care if it's not Batman, Superman, you know. They barely even care if it's Superman. If it's Batman, mm-hmm. Justice League, it's written by Johns, you know. If it's, it's if it's a book that matters. I mean, a book like Green Arrow made such a dramatic turnaround. Earth 2 could have stumbled after Robinson left, but actually became no, better, I think, in a lot of Tom Taylor's minds. been doing an amazing job keeping that book going. Yeah, so maybe, we're, maybe we should have the new 26, you know. Just accept where you are. But the weekly seem to be doing well. Forever Evil is doing well for us. Oh, God, I keep getting those mixed up. <laughs> Future's End is doing uh, well for us. Batman Eternal is doing well for us. I mean, not as good as the parent titles, but, you know, considering they come out weekly, a lot of books being sold. So, But, I mean, again, it's also a decent price point for a weekly book, and you've, yeah. they've canceled enough books that it's not necessarily something that you're going to see. Well, your, when? Your, like, it hit your wallet as hard. Well, when Forever... Uh, God. When worlds end, I'm gonna get these. Like they're all such, they're all like generic Look at the font. Look at the font. Think of the font. They're all generic titles. They need a character name in them. They're world's the, end. When worlds end comes out, worlds end. Yeah, that's the DC, that's the April thing next year. No, that's the Earth Two Weekly Series. Oh, uh, okay. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is supposed to be in the next month or two. Get mm-hmm. solicitations for. Um, I, I, as far as I know, this is all official. Uh. They'll be back up to 52 titles, yeah. but 12 of them are because it's weekly. Yeah. So 12 issues a month are are the weekly books. So, you know, whatever. 
I mean, I, that, again, that's something that I don't necessarily mind because it's not necessarily – like they're still keeping underneath what they said they were going to keep it underneath. So if they're doing these weekly titles, they're not counting – you know they're not throwing they shouldn't in. Shouldn't be underneath them though. That's the problem. They should have enough consistently good selling titles to keep it at well, yeah. or above. <clears throat> yeah, but I mean, look at I mean, look at the stuff. That, I mean, have they canceled Batwing yet? Yeah, I believe that's on the list for for the next uh, the next block yeah, chop. Yeah, I mean, I think that like I know I know they're they're they canceled the uh, Phantom Stranger, right? Or yeah, going Pandora. To, and like Pandora, so it's it's like. They're cycling through, so it's okay. I mean, to me, it's yeah, it's fine, you know. But again, it's they're not killing you with going, you know. Here is a three ninety nine book every week, you know. Well, they've uh, they've upped the amount of three ninety nine books. Oh yeah, I know. So I mean, there's you know, well, Justice was it Justice League Dark is now three ninety nine. Yeah, I think so. Because I think the, it was like two ninety nine for a while. There's not too many of the replacements that have stuck around. Earth two has. Yeah. Uh, I even. Uh, World's Finest? World's Finest has, yeah, but we'll see how long that yeah, lasts. Yeah, that, that one's not... Secret Origin will last. It'll, it'll, Secret Origin will do a good run. I think that'll do okay. Aquaman and the others, eh, who knows? Aquaman and the others, I think, honestly, is tying in with Future's End, which is perfectly fine to keep around with Future's End, because, yeah. I mean, it it has the... Uh, one of the characters sees Su- the future. Superman Wonder Woman does well. Just as United, that'll stick around. Harley will do well long-term, but... That's it. I mean, everything else comes and goes so fast. We were actually no. I mentioned this before. You know, DC has done a good job of calling the the garbage, and, and we're we're getting pretty close to it now. I like Phantom Stranger, Pandora enough, but I don't. You know, who no, knows? No, they're books that necessarily. I mean, if they go away, it's not it's not something that you're not crying over yeah. spilt milk. Yeah. You know, if the characters come back in they're other books, needed. they come back in other books. Yeah. I mean, I am still saddened that All Star Western is going because that's yeah. been amazing. Yeah. Um, but again, yeah, it's. I think DC's been doing a really good job with it. Yeah. All right, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up now. That's it. Uh, no more, I thought you had a couple more questions. Oh, we're fine. We're fine. You're killing people, man. You said you're gonna answer some questions. Some people were still we hopeful answered, that we, we would answer their question. We answered a bunch of questions. It. We answered a bunch. Oh, but you're, now kill, it's you're killing the dream. Yep. Now it's time to wrap up. <laughs> uh, thank you guys for being here. We'll be back next week with uh, another episode. Uh, live Geekbox this week from E3 should be Ryan Scott and Justin Haywald and Adam Fitch and not myself. No Ryan. And no Ryan Higgins. Two weeks of no Geekbox with me. How happy are all you guys? Uh, well, they listen to the Common Conspiracy, so... Uh, maybe they're not happy. Well, they're probably still happy, so... Uh, you can listen to this episode and all our previous episodes at geekbox.net and comicsconspiracy.biz. You can discuss this episode in our forums at forums at geekbox.net uh, net in the Geekbox mm-hmm. Facebook group. Go search for that. Uh, you can buy all your digital comics through us at digital.comicsconspiracy.biz. Uh, we all have a bunch of other stuff we do when I'm not still horribly congested. <laughs> So sorry for that, this episode. Uh, com. Yes. Comicsentokine.com. That is Omar's website and blog. The Infinite Longbox Podcast and Wanderers in the Fourth Dimension, Charlie's Doctor Who podcast, where they're watching every episode of Doctor Who in order. Uh, so go listen to those or visit those sites. Mm-hmm. You can also visit us on Twitter. I'm Ryan Higgins Ryan. Brock is Brock Sager. Omar is Comics and Dekine. Uh Bryce Larson is Larson Bryce. Hopefully he'll be back in a week or two. Toby's Toby XI and Charlie's Incendi in Chaos. Uh, thank you guys, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>